Hello, thanks so much for joining me for this webinar. My name is Linda Folster. I'm the career advisor for our BC Yorkville University campus. Today's topic is the career wheel, exploring the fit between you and your career choice. So here's a little bit about my background. I bring 13 years of experience advising around a thousand clients in career transition. Uh, my work has been primarily in the nonprofit sector. I did, however, prior to joining Yorkville, have a few contracts in the post-secondary environment. So it's not unfamiliar to me. As you can see from all the bullet points in the slide, um, I have a lot of certifications. I am certified to administer and interpret a number of different career assessments, and I am a certified career development practitioner, in addition to holding a master's in adult education. And as a former entrepreneur myself, I've also worked as a business advisor with entrepreneurs at the startup stage. So it can be very confusing and even overwhelming to figure out what kind of jobs to apply for when you finish your degree. You might have a very specific job in mind, but perhaps you don't know what else is out there. Or maybe you see so many options in front of you that you're afraid to focus on just one or two because you're worried about making the wrong decision. It feels like a lot of pressure. Plus you might be worrying about the, how the pandemic has affected the job market in your industry. And that just adds to the pressure that you're already feeling. So I want you to take a minute to dream. I want you to imagine for a moment what it would feel like if you knew yourself so well that it's relatively easy to filter possible jobs for fit. Imagine also what it would feel like to be able to confidently adjust your plans according to changes in your personal circumstances and also changes in the world. Although sometimes it doesn't feel like it these days, the world has not stopped and it's not about to end. Of course, we're seeing unprecedented and rapid change as a result of the global pandemic. And this calls upon us to be resilient and flexible and much more adaptable than perhaps we're used to being. I'm a firm believer in frameworks. And in this webinar, I'm gonna show you one that will build your self-understanding in the context of the world that we live in so that you no longer need to feel overwhelmed by pressure and confusion because you're gonna have a compass that's gonna point you in exactly the right direction as you and as the world around you change, whether that's now or at any time in the future. So here's what I'll be covering in the webinar. After a brief introduction to the topic, I'll explain to you the model called the career wheel. I'll summarize the whole model, but today I'll be focusing on only half of it. And that's the internal factors that together help you to understand your assets. I'll show you some assessments and resources that you can use to help you identify your most important skills. This is going to include your transferable skills, employability skills, hard skills, and soft skills. Next, your interests. In other words, what you like versus what you don't like. Your workplace values. And this refers to the beliefs that you have that guide your actions. Because the ability to live out your most important values at work is central to not only your satisfaction, but also to your sense of overall well-being outside of your working environment. And then the fourth area that we'll cover is your personal style. And this refers to how you go about doing things. For example, are you someone who likes to take risks or maybe you're more cautious? Are you people oriented or are you reserved? And I'll conclude the webinar by introducing you to the other half of the career wheel, which are the external factors. And this is going to be a separate webinar called part two. And I strongly encourage you to participate in that one as well, so that you can understand how to complete the entire tool so that you can use it in order to set some career targets and make some important career decisions. I think this quote by Tony Robbins is a really appropriate one to our topic because it implies that there's a lot of deep reflection uh, that goes into making a decision that feels in alignment with who you are. 
And uh, Tony Robbins says, your life changes the moment you make a new congruent and committed decision. The first step in any career exploration process is to know yourself. This includes your personality style and your preferences. It can include what we call your motivated skills, your various interests, and also your core values. And some of these things can change over time, making it important to regularly pause and reflect about how you've changed and how the world of work has changed. Amundsen's and Ponell's career wheel provides a backdrop for this exploration. The wheel comprises eight different sections that both influence and are influenced by your career decisions. At the center, career alternatives are all the career options that you could consider. I actually know Norm Amundsen, one of the developers of this model. He was a prof and an advisor when I was doing my master's degree at UBC. And I had the privilege of having a few one-on-one -on -one career counseling sessions with him at various stages of my education and my career. He was the one who helped me confirm my decision to become a career practitioner. And he um, advised me on what courses to take as electives to better prepare me. And I followed all of his advice and look how it turned out. I'm sitting in front of you as a career advisor with a great career that I enjoy. And I've seen both Norm and his friend and colleague, Gray Pinnell present at industry conferences and their sessions are always jam packed with standing room only. And there's a reason for that. The two of them understand at a very deep level, the meaning that career holds for each one of us because it's a reflection of who we are. And between the two of them, they have decades of stories and wisdom that have helped thousands of people to navigate career decision making. And the wheel is a very powerful model. And what I love about it is that it's not at all technical. So it makes it accessible to anyone. So in this webinar, we're gonna focus on the bottom half of the wheel, which was an exploration of your internal self. This includes examining your key skills and your interests, your values and your personal style. I'm sure that some of you out there in the audience have had a job that made you feel miserable and stressed and drained. And in fact, I have some of that in my work history as well. I think most of us do. And when we start to think about the reasons why we ended up feeling that way, it usually has something to do with one or more of the elements depicted here not being in alignment. So uh, for example, perhaps there were parts of your job that you dreaded because you didn't feel competent. In other words, there was a skills gap. Maybe these were skills you weren't even interested in developing. Or maybe you were just bored most of the time. My younger daughter recently finished her marketing degree and I'm amazed to see how she already understands that she wouldn't even apply for a job where she had to market something that she didn't believe in or wasn't interested in. If you've ever had a job where the work itself or the culture of the company conflicted with your values, this can be incredibly stressful and can end up preoccupying you and making you feel like you're walking on eggshells all the time. And finally, if you've had to work in a job where you didn't feel that you could be yourself, for example, um, let's say an introverted person doing sales, this can be exhausting. But you know what? The good thing about bad experiences is that they teach us about what we don't like, which then informs us about what we do like and what we need to have in place to feel happy. But I'm hoping that you won't get yourself into those kind of situations because I'm hoping that you're going to do the self-reflective work that will help you to make better decisions. The first segment in the wheel that we'll examine is skills. In other words, quite simply put, what are you good at? There are many broad categories of skills and each category contains several specific skills within it. So for example, you might've heard the term transferable skills. These are skills that you developed over time and you used in different areas of your life, such as in previous jobs or in your social life or your personal life, maybe through volunteer work or hobbies and so on. And a great way to identify your transferable skills is by analyzing some of your previous accomplishments. Next are what we call motivated skills. What we mean by this is skills that you're not only good at, but also that you enjoy using. So for example, I am very good at sewing. My mom taught us to sew since I was nine years old, myself and my sisters, uh, to the point where I even sewed my own wedding dress years ago. 
but I actually really intensely dislike sewing. So sewing would not uh, be a motivated skill for me. Then there are employability skills. These are the set of soft skills that you need in order to enter and stay in and progress in the world of work. And then finally, there's a lot of confusion over the difference between hard and soft skills. And we'll get into uh, detail about this in a couple of moments, but for now, you can think of hard skills as ones that are very specific to a job, whereas soft skills can be used in any job. Next, I'm gonna show you some activities and assessments you can do to help you identify all these different kinds of skills you possess. By the way, I wanted to let you know that all of the links and the resources from this webinar are available from Career Services. You just need to email us at careerservices at yorkvilleu.ca to request them and I'll send them to you. And I'm going to be sharing our email address with you again at the end of the webinar. So starting with transferable skills, how exactly can you unpack your previous accomplishments as a way of learning this about yourself? This slide in the next one shows screenshots from a document by a company called Skillscan. It takes you through various activities to help you to identify the skills that are strongest for you and that you most enjoy using. In other words, your motivated skills. So here's the process for identifying transferable skills. If you look over to the screenshot on the right-hand side of the screen, in the blank box in the middle of the slide, uh, this is where you develop a list of enjoyable experiences or accomplishments that you can recall from any part of your life, all the way back to childhood, if you like. And you give each one of these stories a title. So each activity or situation that you choose has to meet all of the following three criteria. The first one is it needs to be a story or a situation where you played an active role. So for example, if you were to say, I developed a mentoring program for high school students, then you'd be on the right track because that's specific and it gives some insight into you. Versus if you were to say, I like creating service programs, framing it that way is too general and it doesn't give us much information about you. The second criterion is it must be a story where you enjoyed the process of performing that activity as well as the end result. And then the third criterion is the activity had to have had value to you, not necessarily to anyone else. In other words, it made you feel proud of yourself. So you write the activities in this blank box and remember in order for any activity or story in your past to make it into the blank box, it has to meet all of these three criteria that I just described, not just one or two. And then from the list of activities in this blank box, you select the top five most rewarding and enjoyable ones, and you list them in the table at the bottom of the slide on the right-hand side. Um, you reflect on and you write down the three most rewarding aspects of each of these activities, and then you probe these stories to look for themes that reveal skills that come naturally to you and that you're inner motivated to use. You use them very naturally. These are the proofs of your skills that transfer to any situation. In other words, your transferable skills. These screenshots are also from the skill scan document. This is a separate part of the activity um, and it includes a step-by-step -step uh, somewhat objective way to rank in hierarchical order the skills that you most enjoy using, ranking them from most to least enjoyable. It can be hard to do this kind of analysis without a tool like this because, first of all, we typically know at a very visceral, intuitive level what we're good at, but it can be hard to put it into words. And secondly, it can be so subjective. So this process takes some of that subjectivity out of it because you'll be assigning numerical values to your skills. So here's how it works. You see on the left hand side and in the middle a couple of screenshots of this um, grid that contains a listing of a wide variety of skills. And you can see in the rows that are shaded in gray are labels for uh, skills that are described in quite a broad way. So for example, we have relationship skills, communication skills, management and leadership and so on. And then within each of these broad categories of skills 
are some very specific discrete skills. So you can see under relationships, there are the specific skills listed as collaborate, respect diversity, resolve conflict, and so on. <clears throat> so uh, the next column over, you're asked to rate your proficiency level. And that means is your evaluation of how good are you at performing that skill? So if you consider yourself to be very good, then you give yourself a rating of three. If you're moderately good at performing that skill, you would give yourself a two. And then a low level of skill would result in a score of one. The column next to that is your enjoyment level. So how much do you like using that skill? Uh, if you consider um, that skill to be one you enjoy quite a bit, you would give yourself a four. And then a three would reflect a moderate level of enjoyment. And then a two would be a low level of enjoyment. The column next to enjoyment level is the total. And what you do there is you multiply the number in your proficiency level times the number in your enjoyment level for a total score. So you repeat the same process with each one of the different skills. And you can see at the bottom of the column called total, there's a category score. So in other words, what is the score overall for relationship skills, communication skills, and so on. And you derive those scores by simply adding up all of the scores that are listed in the total column above the category score box. And then you end up with some numbers. And you take those numbers, and that will allow you to transfer the names of the skills into uh, the box on the right-hand side. So in other words, the skills with the highest scores go into the highest category. Um, the next level is the second highest category, and then there's the third and the fourth highest category. So um, you can rank order your motivated skills by uh, performing these numerical calculations. It makes it a lot easier and a lot more reliable. So you heard me speaking earlier about another category of skills. It's called employability skills. And here I'm showing you some screenshots from an article written by the Conference Board of Canada. They've done some considerable research on this topic and their skills list is widely accepted by Canadian employers. They define employability skills as the skills you need to enter and stay in and progress in the world of work. And this is whether you work on your own or as part of a team. So here's a breakdown of the top employability skills you'll see in the conference board article. The three main categories are fundamental skills. These are the skills that you need as a basis for further development. Next is personal skills. This refers to the personal skills and attitudes and behaviors that drive your potential for growth. And then there's teamwork skills. These prepare you to add value to the outcomes of a task or a project or a team. So I'm going to give you a minute to look at the specific skills that are included within each of these categories and think about which ones are strongest for you. So on this slide, I'm showing some information from an article from indeed.ca. It defines and shows the difference between hard skills and soft skills. In a nutshell, hard skills are the ones that are very specific to a particular job, like using certain types of software if your field is technical, or doing intake interviews if you're a counselor. Whereas soft skills are ones that transfer to any job. And so that could include things like communication or organization or adaptability. Each of the skills categories I explained in the last slide, in other words, the fundamental skills, the personal management skills, and the teamwork skills include some soft skills. They give some great examples along with definitions at the bottom of each column. Hard skills are defined as technical knowledge or training that you've gained through any life experience, including in your career or education. And soft skills are described as personal habits and traits that shape how you work on your own and with others. This article on Indeed also features a short video to explain these differences and you might wanna watch it. Once again, these links and resources are available from Career Services.
So after you've assessed all of your different types of skills, you write down your top five into the skills segment of the wheel. The next piece of the wheel is interests. These are the things you like or you love to do and the things you're passionate and curious about. Some interests focus more on personal activities or hobbies without much emphasis on work. However, in general, it's important to be interested in the work you're doing. You might be wondering why I've included what you dislike on a slide about interests. And the reason is that things that you don't like provide clues about what you do like. So for example, if you don't like working outside, you probably like working inside. Remember that interests are not the same as abilities. Abilities or aptitudes refer to those things which you can do or which you could do with training or experience, whereas interests refer to what you like. So when you're looking for interests, it's important to examine all of your life, not just your previous work. Your previous work might be more of a reflection of the opportunities that you've had that have come along, as opposed to your interests. Also, think about areas of your non-work life, like volunteer work, um, leisure or recreational activities, the courses you've taken that weren't mandatory, and also think about your daydreams. Maybe you've always dreamed of being a tour guide in Hawaii. So here, you'd be asked to reflect about what is it about that idea of a tour guide in Hawaii that interests you? Here's a simple tool that you can use to identify things you've either done or thought about doing in different contexts of your life, like your work, uh, your volunteer um, uh, activities or your leisure activities, any learning environments, and then your dreams. You write down several examples from each different context and then you unpack each example and you specify what you liked about it and what you didn't like. And when you're finished completing the table, the next step is to look for patterns in your interests and then prioritize your top five. You then enter these into the interest section of the wheel. The next spoke in the wheel is work values. In other words, the beliefs and feelings that guide you in life. Each of us has personal values and work values, and some of them overlap while others might be unique to either your personal or your working life. Here, we're suggesting to focus on unpacking what your work values are so that you can learn what's most important to be able to live out through your work. I found a great online values assessment that focuses on work values, and I'm gonna show you that next. This is from a great European website I found called 123 Test. If you look at the screenshot on the left, in the column on the right-hand side, you can see that, that this website has 32 free tests available and the site gets very good reviews. I really like this particular one called the Work Values Test because again, we experience our values just like our skills at a very visceral level and can be really difficult to find the right words to describe them. Again, it's so personal and it's so subjective. Plus we have so many values. So using an instrument like this that generates numerical scores and some vocabulary to describe our values can be very helpful. This test can help you to find answers to questions like, why did you make specific career choices in the past? Or why are you making a specific one now? What would be a good career move for you? What are your talents? Which work value suits you best? Which work values will make you happy and successful? So this assessment has 140 questions and so it takes a bit of time to complete. The format is a Likert score, asking you to rate each statement on a scale from totally unimportant to extremely important. It generates a very detailed report, and here are a few screenshots to show some of the most useful areas. In the first screenshot on the left, you see my work values profile. This shows how I scored on my top 14 different work values, and this is compared with the scores of people in the Western European workforce. Now, that comparison is not a local one, and I'm not sure how useful that is, however, the screenshot on the right hand side shows my scores for all the possible work values in the assessment. 
And these are rank ordered from the highest to the lowest scores. And from this, I was able to identify my top five work values, which are autonomy, altruism, performance, creativity, and work-life balance. Not all assessments are useful. However, the results of this one rang very true for me, and it would have been really challenging for me to identify these without the help of this instrument. So if I were filling out this section on the wheel, I would then enter these five values into the corresponding section. And the final internal factor is to analyze your personal style. This refers to how you go about doing things. For example, are you punctual or enthusiastic, patient, energetic, sincere? And a good way to learn about your personal style is to think about your personality type, including your various traits or characteristics. This is all about who you are as a person and how others see and appreciate you. So whether you're fun-loving and adventurous, or maybe you're shy and quiet, Understanding your personal style can help you explore work options that are a good fit for who you are. This can be hard to put into words, so I'm going to show you a free, a uh, few free online assessments that can help you. So to help you understand and articulate aspects of your personal style, you can do some, some of these free online assessments that I'm referring to, like this one here, which is the Kiersey Temperament Sorter. So what do we mean by temperament? Temperament is kind of like um, a mosaic of observable personality traits, uh, things like how we communicate, uh, our patterns of taking action, common types of attitudes, our values, our talents. It also can include things like personal needs, the kinds of contributions we make in the workplace, and the roles we play in society. There are four temperaments according to Kiersey's theory, and each one has its own strengths and challenges. This particular assessment takes about 10 or 15 minutes to complete, and it includes several questions in a forced choice format, like you see in the example on the right-hand side of the slide. So a forced choice format means that when you're looking at the response options, you're asked to choose one over the other, even if neither one seems to fit. So here, you just choose the one that fits better as opposed to fitting perfectly. You might be skeptical about how accurate the results would be when you have to choose responses in this way, but you might be surprised by the results. Here's an example of the kind of information you'll learn about yourself. My temperament is called an idealist. You can see facts like what percentage of the population share your same temperament, common words to describe you, core characteristics, they provide a general summary, um, plus some key themes that drive uh, your feelings of self-esteem. And these screenshots are actually just a small sample of the information that you can learn from the report. So for example, within my temperament type, there are four subtypes, and those are labeled teachers, counselors, healers, and champions. As you can see in the screenshot on the right-hand side of the screen, there's four temperaments, and the three other ones are called artisan, guardian, and rational. There's a lot of rich information in these reports, so you'll find lots of characteristics that will resonate and will help you to describe your personal style. Here's another example of a free online assessment that can help you understand the key themes associated with your personal style. This one is a personality assessment and it's based on psychologist Carl Jung's type theory. You may have heard of or done in the past the Myers-Briggs type inventory, also known as the MBTI. Although this assessment is not the MBTI, it will generate a result like the MBTI assessment in other words, your personality type. There are a total of 16 different personality types according to Jung's theory, and each one has a four letter code. You can see these listed in the screenshot in the middle and on the right hand side of the slide. Here's an example of um, what your report includes about your personality type. So this is my result. My personality type is ENFJ, which stands for extroverted, intuitive, feeling, judging. And judging doesn't mean judgmental, by the way. 
As you can see, there's an interesting and in-depth description of the most common patterns of my type, including an overall summary, uh, contributions to an organization, what I am like on a team, my leadership and communication style, uh, my problem solving approach, even a stress profile is included, which is very interesting to read, uh, what my motivators are, my learning style, and also opportunities for growth. So when you're reading reports like this, you can highlight or take notes on the parts that feel like they describe you the most accurately. And after doing a few of these assessments, you're gonna likely see some patterns start to emerge. So pay attention to these patterns and write down the top five themes that seem to best describe your personal style and enter these themes into the career wheel. So this concludes the lower half of the wheel, which was focused on analyzing yourself to discover your core assets. And part two of the webinar series is going to take a look at external factors, getting you to research and reflect upon the following four areas. The first one is career opportunities. In other words, what can you learn about the labor market that's relevant to your career choices? Next is work and life experiences because there's more to your career potential than just a list of past employers. All of life's experiences should be explored for what they can reveal, including ones from your various life roles and contexts such as your personal life, the experience of raising children, pursuing hobbies, competing in sports, and doing volunteer work. Those are all examples. These experiences can be just as valuable as formal jobs and sometimes even more so. Next is your learning experiences. And these include not only your formal education, like what you're doing at Yorkville or Toronto Film School, but also the learning that you gained informally from various situations in all the different areas of your life. So for example, I remember when I completed the wheel, I used my experience of learning how to dance salsa, and I was amazed by the patterns that this revealed about me. And then the final segment of the wheel is significant others. These are the important people in your life, like your life partner, uh, maybe your children or your parents, all of whom can be influenced by your career decisions or have an influence over the decisions that you'll make. I hope you'll join me for part two. Um, it's going to be on May the 20th. And between now and then, you can start working on what we covered in this webinar, which is the internal exploration. And if you're not available to attend part two, then keep looking on our Student Success Center tab or our Yorkville YouTube channel for the recorded version. I'd like to wrap up with this great quote that I found from Stephen R. Covey, which seems very appropriate. Your power to choose your direction of your life allows you to reinvent yourself, to change your future, and to powerfully influence the rest of creation. So self-reflection is always a lot of work. And I like this quote because it focuses not only on what's possible when you put in the effort, but also that choosing one path over the other is within your control. So uh, this concludes the webinar. I just want to remind you that we do have resources that I referred to available to you. All you need to do is send us an email at either careerservices at yorkvilleu.ca or career services at torontofilmschool.ca. And of course, one-to-one uh, -one coaching and possibly even group coaching that's under development are also available from career services. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you found it valuable and that you will be able to make use of some of these tools that I explained to you. And uh, we would love to help you if you're interested in learning more. Um, we're happy to work with you either one-on-one -on -one or perhaps even in a group coaching scenario, please. Uh, we welcome you to reach out to us at any time. So thanks again for joining me today. Uh, stay well, bye for now.